What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to install a new lithium battery into my 2022 MV Agusta Brutale 800RR SCS. Yes, I know it's a long name. So you may ask, why am I doing this on such a new bike? Well, these bikes are notoriously harsh on batteries. Even though this bike, I got it in June of 2021 and this is May of 2022, I am having issues with it. It does come with a battery tender and they do recommend using that when you're not riding the bike. However, if you're going a day or two without riding it, it seems kind of ridiculous to have to plug it in. But after one or two days, I even start to notice a difference in the voltage of the battery and its ability to start. After three days, four days, five days, it will not start unless you have the battery tender plugged in. Perhaps I have a bad battery. I'm not sure. I'm going to do some tests on it. But let's get into it. So this is the sealed lead acid battery that came with it. It's very difficult to get out and we will take a look at that in a minute. This is the new anti-gravity battery that I purchased. It is an ATZ10 rated for 360 cold cranking amps. This one I believe is rated for 190 amps. This one is an 8.6 amp hour battery. This lithium iron phosphate is rated for the equivalent of Let's see, it says it right on here. A 12 hour, 12 amp hour lead acid battery. So quite a bit more in here, but this is very light. Comparing them side by side, they're almost identical in size, but if we put it on the scale, there is a huge difference. Looking at grams, the sealed lead acid battery is 3,174 grams. And the anti-gravity battery is 993 grams, so less than a third at the same size. I do wish it was a bit smaller. I can tell that the plastic case on here makes up a lot of the size on it based on the weight of it. But like I said, it's very difficult to get it out. So if it was smaller, it would be much easier to put a new one in. With that being said, let's get into the bike and see everything we have to take off in order to replace the battery. It is quite challenging. Before we get started today, I just want to point out one thing. I am not a certified motorcycle technician, so that is my disclaimer. I am just a guy trying to work on my bike in my garage. With that said, let's get into it. So taking a look at the bike, we had to remove the seat, the rear passenger seat, the plastic pieces that go in this area here. Coming down to the front of it, we had to remove the fairings, if you want to call it, that go right here. And then all of the plastic pieces that go on this area here. Then there is a bolt right here. And then there was another bolt in here that I removed. And this is what holds the tank on there. Four bolts, one, two, and then two on the other side. And once you get those removed, you are able to lift the tank straight up. Now this was the tricky part. The battery sits in this area right here. This is the positive connector that I have tied back and the negative, there are two of them right over there. So in order to get the battery out, I had to lift the tank up as much as possible. You can see in here that there are three lines that connect to the bottom of the gas tank. This one had enough slack, this one had enough slack, and this one was a little tight. So what I did is I followed this line through here, which comes out down here, and I saw that I had enough slack in it. So I loosened up, where is it, right here, this little tie, and I just pulled the piece of tubing up a little bit just to give me a little bit more slack, which allowed me to lift the tank up. Right here, I just have a block of wood and a towel to prevent anything from being scratched. And with that, I had enough room to get the battery out. However, it was tough because of this piece right here. You can see the area where the battery sits and it's exactly the same size as the new battery. So with that being said, I'm going to put the camera down put the new battery in, get it all connected. One more thing before we get into the battery installation. This battery comes with four of these and these are the female threads that slide right into here that 
the bolts screw into to connect the terminals. Since you have to really kind of twist this and turn this to get the battery in, I thought it would be a good idea to just put a little piece of electrical tape around here to keep these in place as we're putting it into the bike and twisting and turning it. All right, guys, as you can see, this is a pretty small space and we need to be able to get this down into there. So when I took out the last battery, what I had to do was twist it and then connect the negative terminals on the other side. Once those were connected, I was able to get it out. So what I'm gonna try and do is push it in, twist it up like this, connect the negative terminals, set it back down flat, and then bring the positive around and connect the positive to it. Now we got the battery in there, at least somewhat. I'm gonna flip around to the other side and see if I can get the negatives connected. Now that we got the tank back down, you can see that these brackets drop down on these bolts. These holes line up. You might have to do a little wiggling to get everything lined up correctly. One thing to remember, you have to kind of finagle with a lot of the lines going through here. So you wanna make sure before you put everything back together that none of the lines are pinched going through here, coming down in this part, up in here. You can reach your hand back down underneath here and you can kind of feel around to make sure that nothing is getting pinched. Same thing on the other side. There are quite a bit of lines that run through there. After finishing up the battery install, I wiped down and cleaned all of the panels and put them back on the bike, and now we have everything back together. And just to give you guys one more idea of what you will have to take off in order to replace the battery, we had to remove the pillion seat, the main seat, this rubber plastic, if you want to call it tank guard, this panel right here. Coming down here, we had to remove these two pieces of plastic under here. Moving around the front, we had to remove this piece right here to get to the front tank bolt. And then this rear tank bolt is right underneath this piece. Once you have all those removed, you are able to lift up the gas tank to get to the battery, which is right in this compartment there. And just to review a couple more things, after one day with the stock battery, when I turned my ignition on, I was getting a reading of 12.2 volts. After 48 hours or two days, I was getting a reading of 12.1 volts. I did top off this battery before I used it, and it was reading 13.1 volts on the ignition when I turned it on. I do not have a battery tender that is compatible with a lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'm going to see how it fares without using it, going maybe a few days at a time without charging it. I do have chargers that are compatible with it for RC purposes, but they are multi-chemistry and I can tap it off if I need to charge it that way, but I wanna see how it does without a battery tender. I will do a follow-up video in about a month just to let you guys know how this is working out. The first time I started it up, I could really feel that it had a lot more power when it was turning over and we'll see how it goes. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below and look for that follow-up video in about one month from now. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.